And so in today's video, I wanted to show a little bit of how we went from terrain that looked like this into that. And I think with 1.18 having just dropped, it will actually be really useful when everyone's got their new base ideas buzzing around. So why don't we go ahead and jump in? I've got a little segment that I want to work on over here where you can see there's really nothing going on at all. So we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to jump right in. So to start with, I just want to go ahead and get a lay of the land and what we're hoping to do. So I've got this stretch here that kind of has a dark oak on this side and it runs along the side of where I had gotten building our larger trees. And I really want to just bring connect it out into this lake. So looking around at it, we've got a little sloping hillside that I think a river would work really well, just kind of snaking its way down and through. Um, with rivers, you really want to be careful and make sure that they don't go in a straight line. If you have a straight line, uh, that's well and dandy, but that's going to look more like a channel or something man-made than natural. So I've got this little bit area here, so why don't we go ahead, we'll put in a waterfall. And then we'll do a river that will snake all the way down and around and do like a loop and just kind of end up out at the lake. So looking at the waterfall, you need to make sure that you have something that a water that will feed a waterfall. Water doesn't just show up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look around. So hello, llama. Probably right, right back in here. We'll go ahead and we'll put a little lake and then that will fall into a waterfall, maybe like a horseshoe type that'll wrap around. And then that waterfall will go ahead and fill out, flow out to there. Okay, so we've got the basics outline of a river. The just, just did a dirt art line, nice and simple. Uh, a thing that I want to point out is that we have creepers. Um, is that we have uh, no area that has very long straight edges. Uh, straight edges don't really happen in nature. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that as things move, they're not just in a straight line. So we've got a lot of these sidestepping and just staircase type things that help to create a little bit of shape. So now that we've got a basic outline of how we want our river to flow, it's time to go ahead and add in the depth of it. Because uh, we, if we just leave it flat, it doesn't really look very natural. Rivers don't just stay flat all the way through. So what we want to do is we want to create kind of a bowl shape. And bowl shape can change depending on where the river is. So like here, where it's nice and narrow, I want to make sure that that is a fairly steep bowl because there's still a lot of water flowing through it, but it has a tight space to get through. So it's going to carve a deeper channel. Whereas over here, where we've got a lot more space over here, we're probably going to leave this nice and shallow because water will naturally slow down as the river widens. So it's not going to dig as deep of a groove. And then up here, we're going to do kind of uh, in the, the middle type thing. Something like that. We're going to have a little bit of a deeper channel and then just some slopes on the side because rivers aren't normally just a sheer cliff down into the water. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've done the rest of the um, channeling of the river. You can see that we've got some deep spots, some shallow spots, some areas where it's wider and then just flat. And go around here and I've made a little bit of a loop back for a little eddy and just kind of want to make sure that there's different different terrains. You don't want anything to be super steep unless you're building like a particular canyon. 
then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working uh, these lines of where I had planned the river out back into the terrain. If we leave it like this, that doesn't look particularly great. So what I'm going to do, I'm pretty much just going to start to patch them together. So basically, we're just going to take the edge of our riverbank and we're just going to start working it into the terrain. So once I've got that all done, if I can survive the zombies, I will uh, uh, pop back in and show you guys the progress. So pretty much what I've done is I've gone through, I've just added in the water, and I finished adding or finished attaching the riverbanks to the terrain around it. I like to leave some of the areas as flowing water because I think they help to ease the gap between the different tiers of our river. And it just adds a little bit of movement to the river. Like you can see here in the eddy where it's just got a little bit of a circular motion, which I think is a nice little detail because rivers aren't naturally perfectly smooth. Our next bit that we want to do is we want to go ahead and start detailing some more of the river. Uh, you can see in here, I've actually went ahead and I added in um, uh, stone protrusions in the corners of the river. What that is, is pretty much wherever the river takes a bend on the outside of the curve, stuff is going to accumulate. So what I did is I just added in a mix of gravel and tuft and mossy cobblestone into the corner just to look like the pebbles have been piled up there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to continue that same type of thing into the bottom of the river where we're going to start to mix in uh, some staircases and slabs uh, just to help create a little bit more texture and make it a little less thin. Just going to go ahead and mix it in a little randomly like this just to help give it a little more definition and make it a little less blocky so we're just going to go ahead and finish that up on the rest of the river um, i'll catch you then that so we've gotten some of the bigger features of our landscape done say they are looking thing Time to turn on to our small. The first one that I like to do is I like to go ahead and add in small little game trails, which are paths that wildlife would use if they're running through the forest. I like to just use a shovel, little path blocks, just put these all over crisscrossing my terrain. It just helps to add in a little bit of life without actually having to put in like armor stand creatures or have rabbits running around. Next one that I like to do to use dark oak sapling. They have a wonderful little property where if you place one dark oak sapling, it will not grow into a tree. So you can actually just put these all over your builds. They help to add in very small tree, different places. And you want to make sure that you put it in random spots. You don't want to be putting these into a room. Uh, that's not the way that other one that I like to do really help to fill out the terrain just by adding in bushes. Do that by grabbing your choice of leaf blocks and then just making small piles of them. Uh, you can do however you want them to look. You can do uh, tall ones, short ones, big ones, small ones. Sorry if you can add in the background again, he really has opinions about bushes. But you really want to make sure that you put them around and and you want to put them maybe on the edge of your game trails because game trails will naturally bend in through bushes and so having obstacles that wildlife would have to bend around will help make your terrain make a little more sense I'm just going to go ahead and add a bunch of these in all over the place and help to fill in 
easiest part and potentially the most satisfying. Just walk around and you bone meal. Grass blocks will just go ahead and grow taller grass and flowers mixed in. So it's a way just to add another texture to it and little pops of color here. You don't have to hit everywhere. In fact, I recommend leaving some areas uh, without the fancy grass. Just a bit more of a contrast. Go ahead and mix it in and you can see as we're walking how much of a difference it makes. It takes it from these flat blocks to the different textures. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. No, oh, I think that looks pretty solid. You wouldn't really tell that we had just put that river in. Especially if you come at it from this direction. Let's go ahead, up, up, up. Yeah, look at that. That looks fantastic. And so if you're just having, like if you have a plains biome and you just want to put a river in, this is where I would leave it. However, that doesn't really blend in with where uh, my biome is. I have a forest going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and map out where I want to put some trees. And then I'll do a video on how I actually go through and make my custom trees a little bit later. But then there's also another part that I want to cover, and that's for those of you who are a little more responsible than I am and actually like to light up their builds. I do have a few different tips and tricks for how to hide lights within your build. So the way that I go through and I mark out areas where I want to put trees, what I do is I just place a single stump. And I'm looking for areas where I have exposure to the sky and also where I think a tree would naturally grow. Like, is there going to be a tree on top of rocks? Probably not. However, right here on the corner where there's sky and it could reach over the river, probably. Over here, we put a small one in between all of these trees and we can use it as to uh, why the game trail bent that way. So just doing little things like that and then going through and building in the trees will add a whole nother level to your canopy and will help create a more finished and well-rounded uh, build. And again, you want to be a little bit random. You don't want to just put these in rows because, let's be real, forests don't grow in rows. Again, Titan craft the server that never sleeps. So right here I've got where I'm going to be putting a medium sized tree. Maybe looking at it being like, that's a medium tree. But keep in mind, I have trees that are 130 blocks tall. So in this build, yeah, that's a medium sized tree. So I just go through and I mark different areas of where I'm going to put some trees in. And then I'll go through later and actually build the trees. So then the last little bit that I want to cover is how to sneak lighting elements into your build. And I've got a few different ways of doing that. The first being, uh, it looks a little weird if you're not already in a mushroom biome, but I also think they're freaking adorable. So you grab an end rod, and then you grab a mushroom block and you have a little tiny mushroom. The added bonus being that the end rod will provide plenty of light. And the red mushroom blocks will add some color and you can use the brown mushroom blocks as well just to help add in additional light fixtures. The other one that I do is I'll grab a sea lantern or glowstone, or you could even use torches for it. And I'll go into my bushes, like in here, you can see, and then I'll replace this middle one here with a lantern. And it just helps to shield the lantern so it's not directly out in the open, but it'll still be able to provide some light. So doing all of this, and you want to make sure that you do it 
you don't want to do a bunch of them right next to each other. You kind of want to spread them out a little bit. That way they're not too repetitive. But once you do that, you can start taking down your torch spam and things will stay fairly well lit up. Another option you can do is you can grab moss carpets and essentially create little mossy patches on the ground. You don't want to just do one. So if we put in our lantern there, do that. It looks pretty good, but it's also a little bit stick outish. But if we go ahead and add in the moss like that to help spread it out, it looks a bit better and just creates a little bit of a mossy blanket. So that's what we're going to do. And with all of that, our build is going to be not only safe, but it's going to look a lot better. It looks so much better than it did when we started. So I appreciate you guys for hanging out with me. I hope you guys learned a little something about terraforming. And if not, well, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, if you guys have any questions or have ideas that you want to see me do a video on, or if you just want to say hi, drop a comment. If you didn't like the video and think that my techniques are totally awful, Go ahead, drop that thumbs down. That's perfectly okay too. I don't judge that harshly. I do judge, but just a little bit as a treat. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna finish up lighting this up. I'll put in my trees and then I'm gonna show a picture here at the end of the video of exactly how this thing turned out. And we can compare it to where we started and how we got there. So. I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and see you later.